one, it's a very familiar scripture, especially in the Pentecostal Apostolic Church. You've been in Apostolic Church, if you haven't heard Ezekiel 37, you haven't been in the Apostolic Church. But it says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. He carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley with the full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round the valley. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. I want to borrow your attention for a few moments as we preach from the topic after the autopsy. I hope. After the autopsy, I hope. The I hope is a declaration. I hope you have that, that declaration after the autopsy. And he said that to me, son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. What do we know about this scripture? We know that there were a lot of bodies. We know they had been there in that condition for a long time. We know that Ezekiel had confidence in God because he went ahead and prophesied to a condition that to others may have seemed pointless. But because of his experiences with God, he went ahead and did what God commanded him to do. Well, because of our experiences with God, many of us Follow his command and do what he says do because we know that if God said it, that settles it. When you have experiences with God, you know that he is able. That's why in some very unfavorable circumstances, you are able to have a peace that surpasses all understanding. A lot of times when trouble comes, people don't understand why you're not falling apart. How come you don't just praise your God and die? How come you don't just give up? How come you don't just throw in the towel? Because I have a peace that surpasses your understanding. Died of natural causes. 
When the authorities want to know why someone has died, they perform what we call an autopsy. An autopsy, also known as a post-mortem, post-mortem examination is a highly specialized surgical procedure that consists of a thorough examination of a corpse to determine the cause and manner of death and to evaluate any disease or injury that may be present. It is usually performed by a specialized medical doctor called a pathologist. The body will leave clues to help the pathologist unlock why the person died. I don't know about you, but I, I love uh, some of the shows that come on like CSI. Yeah. Yeah. Love CSI. Yeah. Get in there and they do an examination. And you think the person died because of this, but the pathologist, the better devil, will look at clues that the body gives. I remember seeing one where there was a fire and the whole building burned up and there was a, a, a burned body that was on the table. Like, man, that person died by fire. But the examiner came back and said, no, this person didn't die by fire because there was no carbon monoxide in the lungs. So at the point of death, it was before the fire. The body was burned, but the inside was. And if this is murder. Who did it? <laughs> As we examine the church, we witness a lot of moments. Yeah. My God, my God. People that have died spiritually. Yeah. Well. But we don't know what exactly caused them to die. All right. And many have been dead for a long time. Right. My God. When a coroner receives a body, he or she must first review the circumstances of his death and all the evidence, then decide what type of autopsy should be performed in a minute. Yeah. An autopsy is recommended. The coroner can choose between three different types of autopsies. An external autopsy, where the, the deceased is examined and fingerprinted and Photograph, but not open. Blood and fluid samples are taken. There is an external and partial internal autopsy. The deceased is open, but only affected organs are removed and examined. And then there is the full external and internal autopsy. The autopsies are performed for either legal or medical purposes. Once an internal autopsy is complete, the body is reconstituted by sewing it back together. But the body is still dead. In this passage, the focus is not about how, why, and what brought about the demise of each of these bodies, but that God has the power to bring about miraculous changes That's it. after death. Yeah. 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 After the autopsy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at the examination. Or did you commit suicide? 
Jesus. A pathologist examines the body and checks lab results and interprets the results to determine what happened. Then examine your situation. Was it negligence? Was it criminal? What caused you to die? What does the evidence tell you? There are some signs and symptoms of dying that are observable. For example, those with a terminal illness will show a steady decline toward death. Those with serious chronic illnesses may have peaks and valleys that sometimes give the impression of recovery. As the end of life approaches, there is a feeling of detachment from the physical world and a loss of interest in things formerly found pleasure. There is less desire to talk the dying person becomes less and less responsive to voice and touch, and may not respond to external stimulus. You ever witness somebody in the church dying before your eyes? They used to move when the choir sang. They used to shout amen when the pastor reached the fever pitch. But because they are slowly dying, they do not respond to voice anymore. They sit there quietly. And when the anointing falls in the temple, they don't need to move. They don't respond to external stimulus. I don't care what keys you play. I don't care what bump and groove you get into. They will sit there numb and detached from the service. Have you ever been in a service where it was the anointing was so high and you looked at somebody and they was this detached from the service? You may be that person that is detached because you're slowly dying from some things that have happened to you. It may not be church hurt. And you don't hear from God. And you feel like God has forgotten all about you. You got tired of going to church and listening to the testimony service and people getting up and talking about the goodness of God, but you don't have a And sometimes that was a 
enough to kill you. He lost all of his. I think God and I've never been in that situation. I don't know what that feels like. I only know what people have told me. It's a, it's a hurt that you never want to experience. That's why I, I don't tell people to know how you feel. I don't know how you feel. <laughs> Trust the 
process. You've been sitting in service, dead. Attending Bible study, dead. Singing in the choir, dead. Helping with the outreach, dead. Working with the youth department, dead. Playing the drums, dead. Playing the keyboard, dead. Working in the finance room, dead. Teaching the word of God, dead. Long 